busy day today. Got a lot going on. Got to go down and get pick up a Class C. It's actually a 2019 Jayco. Gosh, I forget the type exact model, but I'll put it right here. I'm excited about it because it's a pretty cool layout. And then we're gonna pick up the RV. Then we're gonna go over to Cliff's Weld Welding and pick up the Subaru. All set up for flat towing, and they installed a two-inch receiver on the back so we can put bikes, not on this trip, but so that in the future we can put the Kuat rack on the back of the Subaru. And then um, we're going to Tucson, Saguaro National Park. Got reservations at Catalina State Park, which we've always wanted to stay at. Then we're going to go into Lost Dutchman, which is a great state park down in Apache Junction. We've always wanted to stay there. So uh, we're going to pack up here and get on the road, and we have more to share with you because I'll tell you, this renting RV thing to share different experiences is, is it's been challenging, it's had some setbacks. So I wanna to explain to you a little setback we had, but I think we've corrected it and we're all good. So we'll go pack up, we'll be right back. Yeah, so pins go outside in. You got these little tabs right here. Yeah. Just line all the holes up. Trish is loving this. Hey, can I say Trish something? Trish is like, give me that teardrop back. <laughs> <laughs> Trish, have you seen this? What do you think? All right. I like the layout. I do too. Um, it's super used. That's not really helpful. Well, we're gonna, but we bought our own, right? Yeah, but the, a plastic sheet with a bunch of holes in it is not super used. Super loved. Super loved. So um, that kind of grossed me out a little. I tell you, you know, Trish is right. This thing is well loved, but I do like the layout. And it's pretty easy to get around. I and mean, it feels kind of simple to, Maneuver and stuff. It's a good layout, isn't it? Yeah. Trish isn't feeling it. I can tell you're not feeling it. Whoa. It's okay. Is it because it's just a little worn or? Maybe. <laughs> this thing, uh, you don't want to look too close. It's pretty nice that they fill up propane before you leave. I guess I don't want to start the engine with him filling the propane, but um, I don't think mom's feeling this quite well, yet, but you know, she'll we'll come see. around. She'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, let's talk about the thing. What was I gonna ask? Oh yeah, so what? what is this? this okay, so the like reason Ford. they call it a Class C is because okay. they cut away right here. So this is a Ford E450 van. And then they cut it right here, and then they add everything back there. And, and a Class B is all contained, and then they just modify the inside. So like the next rig that mom and dad are taking is the Winnebago 59K. Ooh, and one's... they didn't make any modifications to the actual chassis. We're oh, gonna go. Awesome. Here, you want to turn on the car? All right. Uh, One, two, three, four. And that's like this much tail swing. Really? Right there. Yeah, that much tail swing. How do you know? Well, it's it's a kind of a rough number from this point right here, mm -hmm. right here. To this, mm -hmm. roughly speaking, three feet is about this much tail swing. So, we got about this much. So when I turn left, this right here is gonna go like that. Okay. Just gotta have that in my head. Cool. Okay. Where's mom? Mom? She go to Cliff's already? There she is. Oh, really? Oh, wow. The turning radius. Whoa. The turning radius is seriously bad. We're going this way, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Why don't, uh, you have put in your thing? Yeah. Why don't I follow you? Because there's, there's a lot going on here I gotta get used to. Okay. I'm not used to gas. Oh. Like when I, when I accelerate, like nothing happens. Are you pedal to the metal? Mom is gone. Are you pedal to the metal? I'm not pedal to the metal, but I'm 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 working it. Okay. Turn right on West Adams Street. Caleb says, Caleb says, why is mom going so fast? I said, mom's coasting. So what are you doing to this thing? I'm uh, making a whole custom bed on it. 
Really? What and kind of bed? What do you do with it? Um, I'm going to have a flat bed on it, so I have a goose deck turnover ball here, and then a goose deck turnover ball there, so I can have it different types of trailers, different types of fifth wheels. Nice. I can have an Anderson on it, or I can have a BMW. Yeah. Companion. It's kind of cool to see without the bed at all, man. Mm -hmm. See where everything goes? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the whole uh, suspension comes off of it. Everything, leaf springs, it goes to a complete airbag system. Oh, is that what you're doing? Supporter, yeah. So, so you're taking the leaf springs off, putting the air. Off the brackets. So all these brackets come off. There'll be an airbag right here and a four link system. Wow. Makes it ride a lot nicer. How's it going, Mark? How are you? Good, good. How you guys doing? Good. You ready to show us how this whole thing works? Definitely. Awesome. Oops. Looks great. Good. Yeah, the hitch is on there really nice too. Yeah, it's so cool. Okay, so we're down here at Cliffs Welding and Jake is just getting our tow bar. And so the plan now is Jake is going to walk through how this system works. And there's some things I want to share with you about what we did and why we went with this system. So I'll let him do most of the explaining. Then once we familiarize ourselves, we'll probably do another video about it, just kind of going through step by step. Right now, it's just like sharing the process of us learning so that you learn in the process. So we had like an idea that we were going to go to a grocery store before we go down to Tucson. Uh huh. Scratch it. Why? Awesome Mexican food. Right okay. across the street. Oh, yeah. We need to go immediately to Tucson. Park the rig, get in this car, go out to dinner. Oh, you, you found something? Oh, best margaritas in town. Did you know the chimichanga was created down there? Oh my gosh. Um, so we're not going to do groceries or we're going to do Mexican food for three days? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the lit up one? Yes, sir. One of the one of the best tow bars on the market. Yeah, we've heard from people that pull tow vehicles that like at nighttime people try to cut in behind them and yeah, and yeah, so you don't have any lights other than the back of the coach. None of the lights on the front of the vehicle are on. Yeah, the tail light shows. Yeah, so people are waiting for their class A or class C to pass them so they can s sneak behind them and then they're like, oh, there's a car there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> crazy. Yeah, nice, nice safety feature. Oh, Invisibrake. Yeah, yep. and I did that because this brake system would work for gas or d air brakes, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so renting RVs, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. So. Gotcha. And then, but that install looked kind of complicated. Uh. <laughs> it's it's definitely very involved. Yeah, uh, I know I sent you the picture of yeah. uh, you know we got the carpet and everything pulled mm -hmm. up, and then um, yeah that box is actually mounted underneath the driver's seat, so you got to okay. run the uh, the cable wiring under the carpet gotcha. to the firewall. Mm -hmm. And then I sent you the other picture. I showed all the wiring coming through the firewall, kind of laying over the engine compartment. Yeah. So that includes all your tow wiring for the tail lights as well. Gotcha. So. You guys aren't towing. Pretty simple. You just grab this ring right here. Yeah. Pull it out. Twist 90 degrees and these guys all slide out. Oh, nice. So, you take this cable off. So, yeah, when you're all done, really, you only have these guys sticking out a little bit. Interesting. So, yeah, that's super clean. Put them back in, same thing. Push in, twist 90, clips in. Wow. Alrighty, so, tow bar to slide right in. We'll slide a pin in. I'm actually going to grab you a locking pin so okay. you can lock it on the back here. Gotcha. That way, when you guys are out doing stuff, mm. you don't have to worry about someone walking away with a $1,200 piece of equipment. Gotcha. So. The wiring cable built in and then these special safety cables when you guys are all done towing everything stays right here at the tow bar mm. um, a lot of the other tow bars that you have a separate wiring cable separate safety cables you'll see people get their tub wore out and you have to put all, all your stuff in there store it in the motor home yeah and as you guys know you don't have a whole lot of extra storage anywhere so. yeah with any of the manufacturers of tow bars out there, between the coach and the car, you want to be within three inches of level, up or down. Gotcha. Uh, you don't want the tow bar going at a big pitch mm. either way. Um, if it is, it puts a lot of extra stress on the, the base plate and the front suspension of the car. And sometimes if you have issues, they'll avoid the warranty on it. Gotcha. Uh, so you guys are pretty level right here. Um, Crisscross them. Easy. And, they, and those are Roadmaster Quick Links, so they're rated at 8,000 pounds for the gotcha. pair of them, so plenty enough for the Subaru here. So what's nice about having a motorhome mounted tow bar is you don't need to be perfectly centered, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it does, you know, go back and forth. Yeah. Arms do extend out, so it gives you a little, little bit of play there, which might be a little far. So we're good. Wow. Pins. Go outside in. You got these little tabs right here. Yeah. Just line all the holes up. You got these little snap pins here. Now these only snap over one way. Okay. You see how it's leaning that way? Yep. If you try to snap it backwards, mm -hmm. a lot of times it'll pop out or it won't close all the way. Gotcha. 
So snap it over, it's touching, it's good to go. And you got your safety cables, pretty straightforward. Yep. There's a little slot at the bottom there. Yep. There's a little ridge right here. Okay. That ridge always goes on the top. Gotcha. It's not going on the bottom. So kind of line it up, just give it a good wiggle and a push. Seven point plug. Yep. Right there. Gotcha. And the last thing you guys have to hook up up here is your breakaway. Yep. In case something ever happens and this all comes disconnected. Yep. Breakaway pulls out, brakes activate, mm -hmm. car comes to a stop on the highway rather than passing you on the shoulder. Yeah. And then what are these um, levers here? Look like they tighten it up a little bit. Uh, so the levers, when you're towing, the tow bar, these arms will go in and out freely okay. until they're all the way extended. Gotcha. Once they're all the way extended, they lock out. And that's how the car is being towed behind the motor. Oh, I see. So when you're ready to get unhooked, all you have to do is lift that lever up and that unlocks the arm. So yeah, the Invisibrake is, it only takes an electrical signal from the brake lights and the coach coming on. Okay. Uh, so right now, if you were to hop in the motorhome, step on the brakes, and actually, Caleb, you want to do that? Just step on the brakes in the coach and we'll see if the Does he have to turn it, uh, start it? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead and start it. Okay. So I've got a new TPMS system just to try out. It's the tire miner system. It's got a new display. Can you see that? Pretty, pretty cool display. And then Caleb went and put all the sensors on the Subaru. And I will tell you, one of the things that Tim out in Key West with the Newell told us and pretty much anyone, uh, you know, Techno RV and all the folks we work with, is that it's critical to have your tow vehicle to have a TPMS system because in some, I probably we'd probably feel a blowout in this but if you had a big class A or a diesel pusher or something like this and you had a blowout, you probably never know unless someone came up beside you and said you have a blowout. And then of course, if that blowout, you, you didn't stop and it were to catch on fire, I have heard that a lot of motorhome fires are caused actually from a blowout on the tow vehicle transferring. So anyway, so we've got the TPMS system. So I'll put that out right up here. All right, All right we good to go now? Let's yeah. do it. You sit in the captain's chair, co-captains, right. okay? Really? Hey. Get okay, Trish, I'm gonna pull over up here and just check the Subaru. Okay. And just make sure everything's cool. That's a good idea. I think it's good. I do too, yeah. Okay, everything looks great back there. Oh, good. You seem kind of comfortable in here. I mean, I'm, I mean, are you like working and getting things done as we drive down the road? Yeah, I am sitting here. I have a seatbelt on. I wish Charlie enjoyed Class C's and Class A's and motorized coaches a little more. Makes me kind of sad for him. Hey, how are you? What's that? Yeah. Yes, two nights. I do. You're on two Video? separate ones. What's that? I have not been here before. Thank you. Hold for a second. Right. Yeah, okay, make it yeah, okay, but hold on, go slow, because it goes like 20. Mm -hmm. Is that 20? 21. 21. Okay, wait, slow down. Please go 20. really slow. 19. Where are we? Oh, good. 18. Okay, good. So I, it'll be super easy to. Oh, hey, look at the. Uh, 18, 18. Oliver. Oh, nice. Those are really cute. This is you? This is me. Us. We. Hey, I found out what it was, guys. What I think I'm feeling a little bit. What? Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like every time we have the airstream, 
when it, things are feeling like a little like, or like even just hot, or like you want to get out of the car, mm -hmm. you hook up the rig and then mom's making some food, it's all good, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like you're kind of, you want to get out of the car and you get out and you're right, you're right here. <laughs> That's what it is. And I felt that in the class A a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because mom you, did too. You, you guys felt get claustrophobic. Out. Yeah, you want to get out and you, go to the rig. I like the separation the of the truck and the trailer. Okay, so let's chat. Where's okay. his leash? Because he is dying to get out of here. <laughs> I don't have a leash for him. No, on stop. I don't. No, you got the big long lead. No, because I said I don't like this lead and I asked where the other lead was and then I couldn't find the other lead. We have no leash for the dog. No. <laughs> Do we have any long string? One. We have no leash because we left it at your brother's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, we're RVing. All right, listen. Don't open the door. He will <laughs> run out. <laughs> I might follow it. <laughs> run, Charlie! Oh, there. Oh, and then look at that. Oh, wow, that's better. You did it! I found a tether tie. <laughs> That'll be our leash for this weekend. Okay. This is pretty, isn't it? It's gorgeous, and the weather's so beautiful. It's perfect. I was a little nervous because it was like 91 today. Yeah. Auto level was a success, so now we're going to extend slide one. That's not working because the that's not working because the engine's on. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it wasn't working because the engine was on. Dang, this thing has seen some better days. Hello. Hi, Dad. You want to hop in? No. Can you drive around and just pull up and put, and put it in front of the RV? Sure can. And so, then, um, yeah. And then when you get back here, can you hook up water and electric? All right. So you, so you say just back up, go over here around the mountains, and then yeah. go to the beginning like yeah. that? And be back uh, before an hour. Before. Back before dark. Okay. Cool. That's a joke, right? You're just going around the loop and you're pulling in front. Oh, okay. Okay. The thing drives itself. <laughs> Why were you barking at, Charlie? What are you doing up here? Two things. <laughs> I'm rescheduling the tutor <laughs> and, um, this blind was broken, uh -huh. but I figured out how to roll it up on itself oh, and nice. trap it up there because uh -huh. here's the view. That's amazing. Yeah. So I was just thinking, wait a minute, if I was in my Airstream right now, I would uh, have that big front window. But then I was like, I have a front window. I got to get access to it. But the blind nice. was broken. Well, this is a nice place for Caleb to sleep. Well, or at least hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty nice. Is that actually in? It feels um, very, it feels very vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Here we go. Oh, there she is. I bet she's ready. Okay, perfect. Good. Let's so do this. So he's gonna do his tutoring a little earlier and we're gonna go out to dinner? Yeah. Okay, so the dinner place is like 45 minutes away. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, we gotta do it. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. It has to be done. Trisha's an hour and a half for Mexican food. No Mexican food is, 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 is worth that. Wrong. All right. Arriba! All right, you gotta turn it off because even this will get claimed. Have you seen Charlie? Yes, it's, he's like, he's looking at the door thing. The doors went down the locks and he goes like this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's sad. And we have nothing to close that front area, so. Well, the lights are on inside. Well. Do you think he's just gonna sit there all night long? <laughs> Did you see him in the rearview mirror? <laughs> okay, this place is really far away. I need you to get in the car.
Carl is the famous, been around since the 1920s. And that's where the chimichanga was invented. Yes. Oh, we're stalling. Okay. All right. So do you want to just go there tonight because it's been kind of a long day and we can hit the other place tomorrow? Yeah, but do you think we really will hit the other place because we have a work call and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think we will. Okay, if you do, then let's, yeah, let's do it. But don't you want to cook at least one night? Caleb, what's going on? I'm so, it's been a while, okay? <laughs> it's been three days, Dad. It's been three days. Do you not know how to forget a car in three days? He's just, I think he's still sitting there. <laughs> Charlie, I really, I really hope that you. He looks like the same exact position. It looks like he did not move at all. Oh, Charlie. He looks the same exact. All right, good morning. We, well, first of all, we woke up this morning to Charlie barking and guess where he was sitting. <laughs> You, yeah, that's exactly where he was sitting. We invited Caleb to come, but he doesn't want to come. Well, he does want to come, but he wants to sleep more. And then Charlie might be invited, but there's some trails where dogs aren't allowed, and we didn't want to take the chance. We have three hours to go get in a hike and come on back, but mm -hmm. there's a bakery I want to visit on the way back. <laughs> okay, 17 miles away, Sora National Park, start. popular questions on the website for Saguaro National Park and one was, should I be concerned about snakes? The answer says, keep your eyes on your hands and feet at all times. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of answer is that? <laughs> I think what they're trying to say is don't stick your feet or your hands in a bush. When well, you're hiking in Saguaro National Park, <laughs> please keep your hands and feet on the trail at all times. Right. Keep them I'm visible. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you have to hike. Ah! <laughs> There's also, how do you pronounce Saguaro? And it says S-A-W-H-A-R-O. Saguaro. 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 Well, that's a good point, though, because people Welcome do come out here, Sawawo. Trish, from the east, and they say Saguaro. They say Saguaro. That's true. So it's Saguaro. It's Saguaro. But this is the only time in KYD history that we will ever be giving a pronunciation lesson because <laughs> Every time we go somewhere new, we mispronounce something. Yes, and then in the back of my mind, when I get corrected, I think to myself, I just can't wait till you come out to Arizona. <laughs> Okay, as promised, we have our saguaro cacti facts. And I will tell you, Trish and I, being from Arizona, we've taken these for granted all of our life, but we've always been really impressed with them. And I know a lot of people who write in, they maybe you've never seen a saguaro cactus before, and they come out to Arizona or in the Sonor Sonoran Desert and they see them for the first time. It is impressive. And some of these facts are really impressive too, and some stuff I didn't know until we did some research. First 10 years of a saguaro cacti cactus life, cacti, plural, grows an inch. In 70 years, it can be about six feet tall. In 100 years, it's gonna grow its first arm, which is unbelievable. The oldest cactus, saguaro cactus to date was called Granddaddy. It was 300, estimated to be about 300 years old, 40 feet tall with 52 arms. It died in the 1990s. Unbelievable. I also read that after its first, after the first rain of the year, they can grow 50% in diameter which is Whoa. crazy. They actually carry about 200 gallons of water in a, in a large, let's say, mature saguaro cactus. Bigger than any RV tank we've ever had. <laughs> no kidding. So, um, you know, they're in the Sonoran Desert and they're only gonna grow, did it say 4,000 feet? I think like 4,000 feet. And I think what's interesting about that is like when you drive up through Arizona in certain parts, you come across a certain elevation and then there's like a line. And I think there's a latitude line. <laughs> Why, but that kind of stuff just makes me so excited. What? That's his bakery. He's at the window. There's a line down the sidewalk, all um, locally sourced. Like he gets all of his grains local. And then the way 
He may, look at that. Oh my gosh. How fun is that? Holy okay. smokes. Yes, so that's like a heritage. And then we've got another like whole grain sourdough based. So it's low glycemic, Are we low expecting gluten. company? I just, I just felt the need to support it. It was so cool. Well, that's awesome. I messed up. No, really? Did you? Yeah, I made a reservation for last night. And I made a reservation for tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, um, I was wondering if you had outdoor seating so I could bring my dog. I don't know if we're going to open it today because it's really hot. Maybe if I do it about 2 o'clock or so, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Oh. It's too hot right now. I got oh. it seated, I'll put it. Oh, it's hot. okay. It's too damn hot out there. I mean, I've got... Yeah, maybe if you want to come about 1, 1.30, I could do something. Okay. Everybody I've sat outside keeps coming inside, but <laughs> we can if you want to. There's other Charles in town. Uh -huh. Going to Colton Sunrise and Oracle McGee, they have patios to walk in. They have shade. I don't have shade here, Dad. I think it's pretty obvious, but this isn't going well. <laughs> it's not that it's not going well. It's fun. We're having fun. Yes. But, but it's just not going to plan. Right. And this happens quite a bit, actually. And we just thought we would, like when, here's the problem when things don't go to plan in video land. It's not in order. It's not consistent. And we have it to like jump sense. in here and be like, what's going on? So I messed yes. up the reservation. If you recall, I, I, I don't know if I went into detail in the beginning of this video, but like we're not even in the rig we're supposed to be because the Class C I wanted was an Integra. Mm -hmm. And I emailed him through RV Share and I said, you know, hey, I happen to notice that your RV is also on RV Trader for sale. So what happens if you sell it? And he says, no, you make the reservation. We're good. We're good to go. And I'm like, okay, cool. The day before we're packing up to leave and I get this message and I, and I see on my phone, it was RV share and it comes up. I'm like, oh, he's probably, you know, it's the confirming. night before, probably confirming like where to pick up or something like this. Trish mm -hmm. is like literally packing. And he says, Hey, uh, you know, we had kind of a bad experience on the last rental and we've decided that we're just going to, um, sell it and we want to keep it in good condition. So we're canceling a reservation. And so I replied and I said, Basically, I said, bro, I pretty much asked you this question specifically. Like, are you going to cancel us because it's for sale? And you said you wouldn't. And he's like, yeah, sorry, I am. Where did yeah. you stash this rug? I put it in the hallway. Oh, okay, great. All right. I'm a little surprised that there, there isn't even room for a rug well, in or the a storage. Trash can. But you know what? This is really fast. We just took the things up. It We're is like fast. Ready to roll out. It is fast. That's really But we cool. do need to hook up the tow vehicle. That's true. So I think it's marginally faster. It motorized feels RVs. A lot faster. It's emotionally a lot faster. Yes. But it, in terms of actual time, it's marginally faster. But hey, emotional time is a real. That's a, a real, real thing. thing. It's a real thing. <laughs> it's why we like the airstream. Because yeah. when I'm sitting in the airstream and I'm like, oh, I have to tear down. I'm like. Oh, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Not that much to do. It's not, and, and the fizz wheel was just as easy, but I'm like, oh, all right, I gotta start. Well, it was bigger. We had a lot of stuff all over the place. We did we spread out. Sure. We did yeah. spread out. All right. Roll both the windows down. I always like to have my windows down when I'm maneuvering around RVs just so I can hear everything. Feel like, I kind of um, feel like there you go. Man, I just love how easy that is, huh? Yeah, I like how all the joints rotate, and that makes it, um, it's like that way you don't have to have the car. Yeah, how it. do you get it on in an angle and exactly. like backwards? You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like, or further away, not backwards. No, it's really well designed. So it's everything moves. There you go. So it's not showing any pressure back here, but I don't think it should yet. I think that we have to start the coach in order for this to engage the seven way and for it to pressurize so all right so you want to go start it you want to go start the coach uh i don't know should i be back here no i want to record right. yeah, so yeah. start the coach okay and then i'm going to give you a thumbs up to hit the brake that didn't, that didn't take long okay on off on off. Nice. There you go. All right, well, we're ready. That was easy. Really? It, it was. It's easy. It was. So this is way less mentally fatigue. It is. I could see. I could see that. But I, I believe that driving our F-250 is mentally less fatiguing. Less fatiguing. 
I'm on board with that. Yeah. So it's trade-offs. Yeah. Right? And there's different aspects of it. I mean, there's just nothing quieter than our F-250. And <laughs> it's and 72 miles per hour with cruise, adaptive cruise control. And there's nothing better than that. What's all that rattling back there? Is that the oven? The oven. What's in the oven? A fan? Really? Is there something in the oven? No. It's just the oven itself? Yes. It's so loud. Careful, it's going to turn on in here. Oh. Finally, the road got smooth. Oh, this is pretty. Okay, slow, 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 slow. slow. Oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I didn't sleep a doggone wink. I was up all night wondering how much longer this is going to last. By the way, the next RV you rent with a motor, I'm out. Get a cat. I'll be at the cabin.